everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for uh, England's squad announcement for the Guinness Six Nations uh, training camp. We have England head coach Steve Borthwick and um, defence coach Kevin Simfield here. A um, bit of housekeeping first things first. We are live streaming today. Please could we ask people to use the mics? Um, Connor here will be passing them around and Sarah, oh, Charlotte as well over there. Um, we're going to start with the intro section from Steve and then we'll come to questions. Thanks. Steve, over to you. Good morning. Thank you for coming to Twickenham for this press conference today. I'm excited to be announcing our first squad of the Six Nations 2023. I think we've got a great blend of experienced players and exciting young talent. We have more than 1,000 test caps in this squad. We have more than 400 Six Nations appearances within this group of players. We have players at the start of their international careers, the likes of Oli Hassel Collins, Ben Curry, Finn Smith. We have players that are experienced internationals that are returning to the England squad after some time away, the likes of Dan Cole, Elliot Daly. All of these players are playing at an incredible level at Premiership and European rugby and will bring with them into this squad a great deal of confidence and momentum as a result. We want to build a team that this nation can be proud of. We want to build a team that plays with courage, that fights in every contest and finds a way to win. This is a squad that will take the first step upon building that team. To have a team that finds a way to win, you need great leaders across the squad. The first time I walked into an England squad, onto the training field, as a young man, the leaders, Martin Johnson, Lawrence Delalio, Richard Hill, Neil Back, Phil Vickery, Jason Leonard, Matt Dawson, incredible. The vice captains of this England team will be Ellis Genge and Courtney Laws. The England rugby team is going to be captained by Owen Farrell. I've known Owen since he was 17 or 18 years old as a player at Saracens. Now, it's normal that as a 17 or 18-year-old enters the first team training at the start of their careers, they are quiet, reserved. Owen, Owen's different. Owen came onto the training field and everybody was struck with awe by how hard he pushes himself. Everybody was also struck by how much he demanded of those around him. That's Owen. It's what he does, and that's why he is captain of the England rugby team. I know there's been a period of uncertainty around Owen's availability. I was informed unequivocally by the RFU legal department on Friday that Owen would be available for the first game of the, England, of the Six Nations for England versus Scotland. Owen is currently serving a four-match suspension reduced to three matches upon completion of a World Rugby Coaching Intervention course. Owen accepts that suspension and can't wait to be back on the field. When I spoke to you shortly before Christmas, I said to you we have a lot of work to do. When I met the players two weeks ago, Kevin and I met them, I think we sensed the pain that was there from the test matches from the autumn, the results and the performances. I also sensed a determination and excitement to get to work to build the team that we want. Every game matters when you play for England. Every game. In 19 days' time, we play against Scotland. We will be using every minute we have available to us to ensure that when the players walk down that tunnel, out onto that field and hear the Twickenham roar again, that they're ready to put in a performance, plays with courage, fights in every contest and finds a way to win. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, James will come to you first. Steve, hi. On Owen Farrell, was there ever a consideration, a temptation for you to freshen things up with a new captain, someone who hadn't captained the team before? We want the best leaders. And I think when you look at it, and we can, we can talk about it, I think what's also important, I think the vice captain's role is an important role. Look at Ellis Genge, for instance, and we, we know Ellis Genge really well. Um, Ellis has this incredible ability, and it's a rare ability in rugby. You don't see it very often. You learn a lot about rugby players in the dining room. Um, you learn a lot about rugby players when they're eating their food. 
And I remember one of the early days watching it and watching Ellis. Now, Ellis went from table to table. Initially, what I'm thinking is he's just trying to get three or four lunches. He is a prop after all. Um, what he was actually doing, what he was actually doing, he was sitting with every member of the squad over lunch. Every member. People, the 18 year olds who haven't played a game yet, to guys that are 34 years old, senior internationals. And Ellis can mix and talk and build every single one of them up. So I think we've got a great leadership team, and I'm really looking forward to working with them. And does this mean Owen Farrell will start at fly half? Have you made that decision yet? We play Scotland in 19 days' time. We've got a squad of players that are going to come and build the team we want. This is not a selection of the team. You mentioned his availability, the RFU writing to Saracens, making him available for that game the weekend before, therefore he serves his ban in time. Some have said it makes a mockery of the judicial system. What's your point of view on that? Um, my point of view is that I'm England head coach. My job is to select and coach the players that are available to me. The disciplinary system is run completely as an independent process. And I think we'd agree there should be that split. The England head coach and the disciplinary system should be completely separate, and that's the case. It doesn't look good, though, does it, from the outside? Well, I think the, the system is a clear process that the RFU legal department runs, and in terms of the World Rugby Coaching Intervention course, the man next to me, his modules that he has coached, is what's been used about to all players now, and over 100 players have completed that coaching intervention course to make sure that tackle height is lowered. Now, we... We as a coaching team wish tackle height to be lowered and Kevin, I'm sure, will be able to talk much more about that. And Eddie Jones has been announced as Australia's new head coach last night. Your reaction to that news? My reaction, um, I'm delighted for him to go and coach his home country. Um, the day that I was announced as England head coach, he sent me a message wishing me the very best and this morning I sent him a message wishing him the very best. You could face them in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Are you worried at all that maybe his knowledge of the team, the players, could come back and haunt you? It's, um, it's a really exciting year with the World Cup around the corner. And I think we're all, as rugby fans, we're all excited by it. We play Scotland in 19 days. So I know the World Cup's around the corner, but 19 days, so 19 days time, we play against Scotland. That's going to be our focus, as Kevin and I, all the coaches and all the players, were focused upon that game. Would you rather Jones hadn't taken a, a job at another international team, though? Nothing to do with me. My job is to coach the England rugby team, and that's what I'm going to continue. The, 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 I've talked about the team we wish to build, and I think every, every um, England supporter wants to see an England team that plays with that courage we talk about, fighting in every single contest and finds a way to win and that's our job to coach that team thanks james russ we'll come to you next hi there steve um just maybe we could have a word on courtney laws he obviously has captain england a fair bit lately done it very well i appreciate he's only just back from injury but how is he and what kind of role will he have moving forward um i was speaking with phil dowson a few day a few days ago uh, director of rugby at northampton phil was telling me about the moment that Courtney made his comeback appearance after, uh, after a period out. He said, Courtney came to the touchline in the game and the game paused. And he said that all the opposition players turned and looked at the touchline. All the, the Northampton players turned and looked at the touchline. The thousands of people around the ground turned and looked at the touchline. Everybody fell silent. He said he was sat there. He said he thought he could see the opposition players shrink a little bit. He saw, he, he saw his team. He said everybody grew a little bit. He said the supporters then from being silent grew louder and louder and louder because on this touchline stood Courtney Laws. He said that's the effect Courtney Laws has upon people. And we're very privileged that we have Courtney in our team. We're very fortunate that we have a leadership team with three top quality players and great men. Um, you've obviously had to make some tough decisions, uh, unless there are injured recently. Johnny May, Billy Vunapola, Jack Knoll, some you know multiple Captain England stars there. How tough has it been to to cut some of these guys for now at least? And is that door still open? Well, I think that the door for any player is open. What we'd want, and I think everybody in this room would want, 
is an England squad where you've got players competing for places. The, the selections that we, and, and believe me, we have sat for hours, haven't we? We've sat for hours discussing this selection and going through it. It should be that way. It should be tough to select. And, there, and then there will be good players, really high-quality players, who are not selected, as well as all the players that are in. Now, that's what we'd want. And our job is to select as well as we can and coach them to the very, very best of our abilities. And as you touched on in your opening address, you've got the real extremes, haven't you? Dan Cole back, which is an amazing story. Thin Smith coming through at 20 off for all the upheaval in his young career. Um, these guys, obviously, they're in with a, a strong shout, would you say, of actually playing for England, both extremes here? So this is, uh, we've got, it's the first step here. We've got a, we've got a squad of players that are now um, going to come into training and compete in training to produce the best team we possibly can for that game against Scotland in 19 days' time. So we've got a lot of work to do, and we're looking forward to getting on with it. And Kev, if I can, Steve just alluded to it before. Obviously, you've had so much to do with tackling technique as your role in defence coach and, and so much more in recent years. Um, can you expand a bit more on, on the Owen situation, the week of tackling, and obviously the, the lessons that he needs to maybe learn for the future moving forward? Um, I, I just like to echo some of Steve's comments first um, like made up to be here really excited with the squad that we've picked <coughs> excuse me we knew um, <coughs> excuse me we knew there'd be some questions about Owen today and interestingly Steve reminded me of the second time we met which was in my kitchen back in Oldham and uh, we were talking about tackle like 18 months ago we knew it was an issue within the sport, we knew and um, both absolutely support the safety measures that are in place. And just to stop this dead now, if anybody thinks that me and Steve were running against each other in my kitchen, that did not happen, all right? That did not happen. Um, but we discussed this early doors, and uh, anybody who worked with me at Leicester will know how hard we went after tackle height. Um, we want kids around the country to pick rubber balls up, boys and girls, to want to play our sport. We want parents to be happy that the, the kids are playing. So we absolutely support the safety measures. I think for us, the pair of us and the coaching team, we believe it's the best way to tackle. Um, we will work hard right from day one on tackle hard on, on tackle height within our um, camp, within our squad, and it'll be something that we see every single week. So we're not shying away from the fact the game has to change. Um, our elite players will need to make some adjustments, but we do understand as well the pair of us that we'll make mistakes along the, along the way, as will players. And um, how we handle that um, is going to be really, really important. But we will work really incredibly hard at it. And just finally for me, with someone like Owen then, from your experience, he's into his 30s. He's had one or two issues over his career at various points with these kind of tackles. How hard is it to re-coach somebody, particularly in the heat of, of the battle and, and how difficult top-level rugby union is? I think right across the sport, we know we need to change. Um, Owen fully accepts he needs to change and he's willing to work extremely hard at it. I think Steve mentioned before the trio of leaders we've got, um, so inspirational in their own right. Owen is desperate to improve and get better every single day, as are Ellis and Courtney and, and the great role models for the group. I think the three of them together form an outstanding leadership group and, and something that Steve and I have mentioned a fair bit of the last couple of weeks has been about fight and care and, um, and interestingly Owen cares I know he cares you know you just have to look at the stuff he's done with John and Jack to show what he's like off the field you guys probably don't see it as much as those who are in that inner sanctum see and we've got Courtney and Ellis and Steve told you a story about Ellis previously and you guys see Ellis as this big aggressive nasty front rower but in essence there's a real soft side to him and, and that was epitomised in his first opportunity to lift a Premiership trophy. He shared that moment with Tom Youngs, which was an incredible moment for all of us to see and for the sport to see. So Owen understands his responsibilities, but I think that, that three as a trio is really powerful for us. Great, thanks. Do we have anything else for the live? OK, thanks very much. Thank you for using the microphones. Um, writers, we're going to go into the writers' brief in there, and broadcasters, Charlotte, will show you where to go now. Thank you very much. Thank you.